Hey, Shubi Doodlers, one of my long-time followers has been nagging me for years to do Frank Sinatra, so uh, here he is. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> well, that's a different-looking pencil, I hear you say. Uh, this was sent to me by Freddie Kreps, who lives in uh, New Jersey in the United States. And he is a big, big Frank Sinatra fan. And he's been asking me for a very long time. Could I do a drawing of Frank Sinatra? And today would have been Frank Sinatra's birthday. So I thought, why not? Basically, I'm doing this little square just to give me an idea of where everything's going to fit. And his eyes are going to be roughly about there. His ear is going to be roughly there. His forehead kind of comes in like that. And then we'll go in there and out. And the chin will then come down. Well, I'm going to start painting this with Naples yellow and I'm just going to kind of fill this in around there and it's a bit lighter above the eyebrow so I'll just leave that and then it's a bit lighter on the edge of the nose and on these kind of upper it's kind of the light is coming here so the edges that catch the light, like the top of this lip part there, I'm just going to leave light, and then this cheek is going to get the lightness as well, and the ear is not too white, either, not too dark rather, and that will kind of about it. And I've got Naples Yellow Dark. These are just colours that I like using, and it's just kind of my palette. I think as you kind of use watercolours more, you kind of find colours that suit you. And I'm sure these colours other people would really hate. Because <laughs> it just doesn't suit them. I'd also, I think it comes into quite a lot in the... Um, Kind of the colour palette that you use, I think is kind of defined a lot by where you live, I think. And if you live in low light level countries like I do, <laughs> then you have a more muted um, colour pattern, really. Colour palette, rather, is what I'm trying to say. I'm adding a little bit of vermilion just to sort of start warming up. And there, like that. I'm sure other people would use completely different colours. But these are just, <laughs> as I say, my palette. I haven't done watercolour on here for a while. I, th I think I will probably be doing more. I'm, I'm changing up this channel quite a lot in the new year. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking, a lot of planning. I'll, I'll be telling you more about it later. <laughs> And um, as I say, I'll be doing more, a bit more watercolor. Now I'm going to go over into sepia, which again, this is kind of one of my favourite colours, which it shouldn't be really. Uh, I think, yeah, I think if I lived in California or something with lovely bright sunshine, or the south of France or Spain, I'm sure I would use a completely different palette of colours. So the thing about watercolors is you're just constantly building up and I'm, I'm sure I've said it before but I'll say it again this watercolor is about um, glazes if you're painting with oil paints and things like that then you um, the color is in the paint and you apply the color on top of your surface whereas here you're applying a thin glaze or a 
like a transparency over the white and the light is coming through reflected from the white paper through the color that you're placing on top so it's like uh you know the old-fashioned transparencies you used to take in in old-fashioned cameras many of you won't remember those at all um, but it's like putting thin transparent layers of color on top And this is now because it's wet, so this is kind of what we call wet on wet. So I'm putting sort of colour in and allowing it to sort of flow into the the wetness that's there already. And this all comes with experience, I think, when you just have to muck about with watercolour paint and just sort of see in practice. In the new year I'll do some, you know, things about watercolour techniques. So I know a lot of people ask about that. Here you see I'm dropping really quite solid colour into this to give it kind of shape. Every now and then you want to make sure that it's dry so I'm using my hair dryer. I know people want to know what paper I'm using. Today I'm using this uh, Derwent watercolour paper which is 300 GSM, 140 pounds, acid free. Nice and thick and heavy, very smooth finish. Now I think I'm gonna do the hat here as well. I want this quite pale across there. So I'm, I'm just putting in a kind of a pale wash across the whole thing really. Um, and then while it's wet, then I'm going to drop in some darker across there to let that kind of drip into the <laughs> just cleaning my brush and let that just kind of drip into there and I want it just a bit lighter there so now I'm taking colour out by just taking it off on the brush like that there we are and then we want this to be a little bit darker there and at the corner, but not right at the front, so we need a little bit. <laughs> it's playing with it. And then under the brim here is going to be very dark, but I'm not using black. I don't use black in watercolour. Black just kind of muddies everything up. So this is a colour called Neutral Tint. Which I like. And we'll start bringing a bit of shade from there down from the underneath of the crown. Adding a little bit of sepia in here just to make this much more of a shadow from the crown of the, the brim of his hat. And now I'm going to do some work around his eyes. And each stroke is just kind of applying a little more of this transparent kind of glaze <laughs> now I'm not going to draw in all the individual teeth because I think that can look a bit <laughs> strange but teeth are white they're not, they don't kind of shine out white. So you want to kind of dampen down the dark, uh, darken them down a bit. Dampen is probably quite a good way of expressing it. And I think that actually wants to come more like that, kind of like that. And similarly in the eyes, the eyes are white, but they're not. <laughs> you can hardly see any. So darken down the eyes, but just very gently and subtly. 
I think the eyes are looking kind of slightly wild and manic and staring, but, but I think once I start working on those, it'll start coming together. I always think with portraits, the eyes are the most important thing. And there's that old corny saying, the eyes are the windows of your soul, but they really are. And of course, Frank Sinatra is known as Old Blue Eyes. So I'm going to start putting some blue in here, but it's quite dark. So we want it kind of much darker around the top. I have to admit this is well outside my comfort zone. <laughs> this is not what I normally do. It's just a little special extra because Freddie has been a, a long time subscriber on this channel and has supported and chatted and commented and uh, and has been nagging me for a very very long time <laughs> to do a picture of Frank Sinatra so here we are <laughs> finally There we go, Freddie, I'm not going to touch this anymore. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, why not go and learn how to draw Steve Jobs or just try the mystery drawing. Either way, make sure you're subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing Channel. And uh, why not go and visit my website? In the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. Be doo be doo be doo be doo.